planet with two suns. A double Star Wars sunset. But what Luke Skywalker saw on his fictional Tatooine planet may now be less fiction, more fact. NASA's Kepler spacecraft, that's scouring the Milky Way to find Earth-like planets, has discovered one that orbits two suns. Is it the real Tatooine? We don't expect Luke Skywalker or anything else to be living on Kepler-16b, but if you could visit there, you would see a sky with two suns, just like Luke did. As the two stars eclipse, Kepler found a periodic dimming of the light, they admit, confirming a third object must be circling them. Unlike the rocky desert of Tatooine, Kepler-16b is thought to be a cool gas giant as big as Jupiter. Its year is slightly shorter than Earth's, at 229 days. Its surface temperature is minus 70 to 100 degrees Celsius. It's uninhabitable. But it's the two suns that have captured the imagination of NASA scientists. Sometimes the red star would set first, sometimes the orange star. Sometimes they'd set touching each other, sometimes set together. So you get this very dynamic sunset. It's never two sunsets are the same. You'd have, of course, two shadows. The orange star would cast a shadow, but the red star would fill it in because it's at a different angular point in the sky. With me now is Dr. Marek Kukula, who is the public astronomer at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. It's amazing, isn't it, things that people dreamt up in science fiction now turn out to be true. That's right. It is a science fiction dream come true for, for many scientists, so an amazing discovery. How much do we actually know about the planet? Well, the incredible thing is from tiny amounts of data, just a tiny dip in the light of the two suns, they've been able to work out the size of the planet, the scale of its orbit, the length of its year, all of these things. So we know quite a lot about it. And we know it's not particularly like Tatooine. No, it's much more like Saturn in our solar system. It's very cold, it's a very big, gassy planet without a, a real solid surface, but still an, an amazing discovery. The Kepler mission is actually supposed to be looking for planets that are more similar to Earth, isn't it? How did it come across this one? Well, that's the primary goal, to look for planets that are like ours, not too big, not too small, not too hot, not too cold. But in the meantime, it's turning up all of these weird and wonderful planetary systems that we really weren't expecting to find. Things that don't resemble our solar system at well, all. Absolutely. We, we really weren't expecting the variety of planetary systems that, uh, that Kepler is turning up. So the universe has been full of surprises for us. What kind of surprises? Because we're used to thinking of one sun and a number of planets revolving around that, but we've discovered there's all kinds of other things out there. Well, that's right. So here we have a solar system with two suns in the centre and a planet going around it. We've found solar systems with enormous planets close to their stars. We've found solar systems with planets that don't have circular orbits. They're more elliptical, almost like comets. Very, very strange things that 20 years ago we wouldn't have believed could exist. But any luck finding what they call the Goldilocks planet, the one that's not too big, not too small, not too hot and not too cold? Well, that is what Kepler is, is really out there looking for. And uh, I think in the next couple of years we will get some really interesting results. There are already some great candidate planets out there. Um, and so I think we're going to find a haul of, of Earth-like planets in the next few years. How far away are these good candidates? Well, these are hundreds of light years away, so they're not really anything that we could hope to visit, certainly in, in our lifetimes. But still, with these kind of telescopes, we can learn an awful lot about them. And the big question is, if they're out there, do they have life on them? The telescopes, telescopes are sending such amazing information. Is there any real need for manned space flight anymore? Because it's rather controversial. The Americans have stopped the shuttle programme. They don't have any astronauts going into space in their own space. Do we need manned space flight? For missions like this, beyond the solar system, it's telescopes and remote observing that, that really is what we need. But within the solar system, I think there is a case for sending people out there. Certainly, the, invo the, the, the inspirational value of doing that is, is vast. But we can do a lot with robotic craft, and, and this, this mission proves that. Dr Kukula, thanks very much for Thank coming you. in to talk to us about that.